Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. And once again, it is tea time. We're back here on the comfy couch and today we're gonna be talking about the Sony RX100. They just came out with the RX100 Mark VI and we're gonna compare it to the Mark V. I wish you would just change the name, right? It's gonna be maybe a Mark 10 eventually or something like Apple does with their iPhones. But anyways, I regress. So. I'm gonna get into some of the boring stuff is what Sony talks about and what they say about this camera. And then I'm gonna give you my thoughts behind it and who this camera is right for and what I think you should care about in regards to this new camera in comparison to the old. So let's get right into Sony's take on it. Now, Sony says that it has a brand new Zeiss lens that covers 24 all the way up to 200. And that will be at f2.8 up to f2.8. 4.5. The idea behind that is, guys, they want to be able to hit the Trinity, let's say a 50 millimeter, a 24 to 70, as well as a 70 to 200. And they're kind of doing that with this. So kudos to them on that. They also said that the lens is going to be capable of four stops of image stabilization, which is great. They also claim that it is the fastest lockup of autofocus of any so far, and they call it a 0.03 second lockup, which is extremely fast. It also has 315 points of autofocus, combining phase detection as well as contrast detection, covering 65% of the sensor, which is not bad at all. Also better IAF with, they call it the high density tracking AF, where it clusters the AF points in a specific point that you tell it to, so that it supposedly will track a little bit better. We now have a touch LCD screen, so you can use that also for following focus, which is really cool. 233 shots you can get in a single buffer before it buffers up and you have to wait for it to clear out that buffer. Reduced EVF lag. So whenever you can get a real time view through that EVF and know exactly what you're shooting at the split second that you're shooting it is beneficial. So they did speed up the EVF. Next, maximum shutter speed of 1 32,000th of a second. Supposedly that's gonna help some of the rolling shutter. Um, silent shooting is also available in all modes as well as a mechanical shutter mode is also available for flash photography. Full pixel readout at 4K video, which is really good. We're not trashing any pixels. It's going to now upgrade from an S-Log2 to S-Log3, as well as S-Gamma3, and we'll shoot, just like the last version, 120 frames per second in HD mode, which is 1080p. Finally, the back panel will flip up right? When we want to do selfies, just like a Canon M6. Not a fan of that. I would love to see it flip out, just like, for example, the Fuji X-T100 did, as well as Canon does all the time with their fully articulating back panels. So I would like to see something different here from Sony. I want to see that flip out. It does not need to flip up because when you do, if you attach a mic, that mic is going to be right in the dead center of your screen and you're not going to be able to see yourself anymore. So I don't know why they did that, but they did. So now the question is, is which camera is right for you? And let me preface this by saying the Mark VI is $200 more. So you're looking at $1,200 in comparison to $1,000 on the Mark V. Now that $200 could be useful to some of you guys. Maybe you'll pick up a tripod or maybe a mic or whatever. So keep that in mind. You're talking about $200 difference. Now, the Mark VI, of course, has the Mark V beat with the processor. You're looking at the newer processor in comparison to an older processor. Hence, the newer processor should be able to do a little bit better job. Now, as far as lenses, this is a toss-up. Now, the new Mark VI does have that Zeiss glass, which is a 24 to 200, whereas the older model only goes 24 to 70, right? So you get that extended reach with the brand new model. The difference is the amount of light that you're getting into this lens, the aperture. Now, the older model will give you 1.8 to 2.8, all right? Whereas the new model, the 24 to 200, is a 2.8 to an f4.5. That is pretty slow, especially if you're talking about dark situations. At 4.5, eh, that could be an issue. So. Remember, you're getting a little bit faster glass with the older model. Next, I believe that the Mark V has the Mark VI beat as far as micro photography. You're looking at a minimum distance of five centimeters in comparison to eight centimeters. Doesn't seem like a big deal, but if you're doing macro work, sometimes it is. Next, I also think the Mark 
5 has the Mark 6 beat as far as the flash range. The old model has a flash range of up to 10 meters, whereas the new model will only go up to 5.9 meters. So you're looking at almost double the distance as far as the flash goes. Now the next point, the Mark 6 completely beats out the Mark 5, and that is because it has a touch panel back screen where you can use that for picking your focus point. That is awesome. Finally, ND filter. This might be important for some of you guys that shoot video out in the daylight and you need an ND filter. The old model, the Mark V, does have an ND filter for video, whereas the new one has that ND filter removed. That could be an issue for some of you guys. So looking at all these specs, in my personal opinion, if you are brand new to this line, to the camera itself, I think the $200 is well worth it getting the new processor, the extended lens, for example, as well as you're talking about a touch screen. That is really, really fantastic. Now, if you already have, for example, a Mark V, moving on to this camera, I really don't think it is worth the $200. That's my personal opinion. There might be some things here, like I said, that might sway you to picking up the new camera. If you can get a good price for your old one, your Mark V to move into the new one at $1,200, then go ahead and do it. But for me, I don't see a big enough difference between the Mark V and the Mark VI for someone that already has a Mark V. Unless that touch panel is gonna be really major for you, as well as that extended distance of 200 millimeters in comparison to a maximum of 70 millimeters. So that's it, guys. I hope you got something from this. I hope you found it valuable. If you did, please throw me a big thumbs up. That would be absolutely appreciated. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you can get all my content when it becomes available and click the bell icon so when it is available, you will be notified of it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com where you can find all of my photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.